started. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Transmart Foundation's May training class uh, on exploring advanced workflows. My name is Rudy Potenzone. I uh, am a part of the Foundation's management team. Um, we offer these classes each month. Uh, they are provided free to anyone, and so please, uh, if you enjoy the class, um, certainly invite your friends to come and take a future class. If you have suggestions or comments, you'll have an opportunity to uh, make some suggestions for us. I will remain on the, the line the whole time and uh, monitor questions. If you're not familiar with GoToWebinar, you do have a question panel as part of your dashboard, and you'll be able to give questions at that uh, into the dashboard. Uh, I will uh, break for questions uh, at a re appropriate times, and so we'll uh, try to get all your questions answered. And there will be time for questions at the end of the class. Uh, the class is being recorded, and the recording will be posted, uh, hopefully by the end of the day, on our website, uh, along with the slide deck. And so you'll be able to review the materials uh, if you uh, need to. Uh, and um, I think that's all I needed to say right now. We do have more classes coming up uh, during the year. Uh, you can see... Uh, Sorry about that. I'm a little bit fast here. Some of the future classes that are coming up include an ETL tutorial, uh, a couple of more uh, basic classes on using Transmart's platform. Uh, and we would like certainly to uh, thank Rancho Biosciences, The Hive, and Thomson Reuters for providing uh, these classes and the people to, to present them. And um, this is all. Uh, they do this voluntarily and contribute it to the foundation uh, in an effort to, to try to help um, all of you to, to use the system better and learn more about the, 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 the Transmart platform. I'd like to uh, just conduct two quick um, surveys, two quick polls. Uh, we like to get the information so that we can uh, just have an idea of who's taking the classes. So the first one should be on your screen. Have you used the Transmart platform before? Um, Generally, just uh, for your information, previously, especially on the beginner's classes, uh, about 75% of the people uh, have not used the platform in the past. However, today's class, since it's an advanced course, I would expect that to be a little bit different. Uh, and um, yeah, right now, the, the results are about two thirds of you have used the platform uh, before. And that's great. Okay, and almost everybody has voted. Thank you for that. And then one more quick question. Uh, this asks, um, how will you be using the platform? Uh, are you using it yourself in research uh, program? Uh, do you support users at your company or your institution? Uh, are you doing academic research? Or are you a vendor? And in the past, it's been a pretty evenly split between all of these. But again, with this being an advanced class, I, I would expect it might be a little bit different. And it looks like most of you are, it's about 50-50 even, either directly using the platform or supporting other users. Okay, so, yeah, and about, uh, I guess it's, now the poll is just about ended, and it's about 60% um, are supporting and 40% using the system directly. Okay, well, great, that's that's fine. That's um, that's what I wanted to cover right now. So um, I'd like to now turn, um, uh, turn this over to Yulia, who is from Rancho Bioscience, and will be presenting uh, her class on exploring advanced workflows. Um, Yulia, I'm going to make you the presenter. Okay. You should have a, a window pop up on your screen to invite you to be presenter. You accept that and tell it which screen. You should be able to get started. Uh, hello, everyone. Do you see presentation screen? Yes, that, I see it. It looks great. Okay. Um, So, just one second, I'll make some adjustment. 
So, um, uh, hello everyone, welcome to this training. So today we will explore Transmart Advanced Workflows. For those who is uh, new, I can provide very short overview about uh, Transmart. Transmart is an open source, community-driven data management system for translational medicine. So the initial version of Transmart was developed in 2009 by scientists in Johnson, in Johnson and Recombinant Data Corporation. And in February 2012, the Transmart platform version 1 was released under GPL license by Johnson & Johnson. <clears throat> so Tra Transmart Foundation was established in 2013 as a public-private partnership, the result of collaborations between scientists in the United States and in the European Union. So what's the... Uh, uh, why is it, why Transmart was designed? So what's the beauty of Transmart? So Transmart allows to integrate clinical and several types of omics data and also helps uh, scientists to do hypothesis forming and testing. So if you can see on this screenshot, uh, Transmart allows to integrate several kinds of data. So it's low dimensional clinical data, and it's high dimensional data. And everything can be fine in one platform and uh, it's all integrated and works together. So Transmart uh, allows to store data. This is a very simple function. So it can be used as data repository or library. It uh, allows to analyze data. So scientists can do data validation, biomarker discovery, and cetera. Uh, Transmart helps research group to communicate and share results. So if results of one group is uploaded into Transmart instance, uh, collaborators can see these results and uh, work uh, together more effectively. <clears throat> so in order to integrate whole data into Transmart platform, uh, this process requires a uh, very uh, good collaboration between scientists, developers, service providers, clinicians, and ETL engineers. Uh, clinical data or all low dimensional data needs to be clean and uh, usually ontologies applies to this uh, low dimensional data. And uh, high dimensional data also needs to be formatted to be loaded into Transmart platform. So it can be gene expression data, RNA-seq data, mRNA as uh, quick PCR and sequence-based, uh, small genomic variants, and cetera, and several more kinds of data. So uh, if you want to know more about Transmart, you can go to Transmart Foundation website using this link. And in the uh, tab researches, you can find use cases uh, public data sets that are curated for Transmart. You can find information about training and tutorials. And there are two public instances are also available on the Transmart Foundation website uh, where you can do uh, your own tests and trainings. So today uh, we will be focused on advanced workflows. So we will try to uh, do hypothesis generation and testing using Transmart advanced workflows. And if we will have time, I will do additional workflows demonstration. So when you do uh, your trainings or testings, please use Chrome or Mozilla browsers because uh, Internet Explorer is not uh, always shows all Transmart functionalities. So today we will be focused on two publications. Uh, you can see PubMed IDs um, for each one. So first paper was published in PLOS One, and another one is published in Cancer Research. So both papers are about um, uveal melanoma, and it discovers uh, genes that are related to uh, metastatic progression in this disease. So both studies uh, have specific data sets that are published in the uh, GEO website and the uh, IDs for these studies are GSE 
uh, A31 and GSE22138. So uh, we will be using these two studies to illustrate how these workflows in Transmart work. So uh, first, a paper uh, by Gengemi says that SD CBP gene or Sintinin gene is associated with metastatic disease progression in UV melanoma. And second paper by Laurent um, indicates that high PTP4A3 phosphatase expression correlates with metastatic risk in UV melanoma patients. So today we'll be more focused on the second paper um, and we will try to uh, prove this hypothesis using Transmart. So our goal today is to learn how to reproduce the published findings quickly using Transmart and find other interesting associations between gene, genes and metastatic melanoma progression in these studies. So um, now I'm going to the instance. So this is a, a private instance. I'm going to uh, to see if this browser is active. Okay, so um, on this instance, you can see that these two studies are loaded. This is uh, on the uh, left-hand side. So this is uveal melanoma by Laurent and uveal melanoma gangemi. So if we open uh, these folders, we can see three major folders. So this is a very uh, general way how studies are organized in Transmart. So we have biomarker data. We have clinical or low dimensional data. And we have subjects folder, which usually contains information about demographics and medical history. For those who is new in Transmart, just brief um, uh, uh, information about so uh, this helix DNA helix sign indicates high dimensional data this is a gene expression data so label ABC this green label indicates that this is categorical data label 1 to 3 uh, indicates that this is a uh, numeric data so first we will do uh, very simple analysis which is called summary statistics so I need to upload whole study into subset one, click summary statistics, and you can see that histograms and diagrams with box plot will appear. You can see comparison of age. You can see the amount of subjects in the sample. If you can see mean and median value for age. You have here gender information, and race information is not provided for this study. So if we would like to, we can hit on grid view and we can see that our data now shown in tabulated view. So if we would like to, we can drag and drop any piece of information from the study tree and it will appear in the, in the columns in the grid view. So we can edit as easily edit this uh, grid view information by unchecking boxes, we can reduce the amount of columns. So, for example, we don't need a um, subset, we don't need race, because we don't have an information about of race. High dimensional data cannot be uh, shown in this uh, columns as well. So, if we would like to, we can save this data by clicking this button, export to Excel. So once we do that, we will see that um, Excel sheet will appear and all data is saved now in the Excel sheet. So there is another option how to export data. So we can click on data export and any piece of information we need to, or whole study, um, we can just drag and drop uh, those notes that we want to export and check this box. 
and click export data. If you don't want to wait for the export, we hit run in the background and this uh, work will be done on the background. Once this work is done, this should be, should, uh, the result should be appeared here and uh, clicking on the link, you can see, you will see your study uh, in a zipped folder and then you can uh, work with it on your computer. So let's go back to the mm, comparison tab and uh, uh, let's go back to what, what's our goal today. So our goal today is to prove this hypothesis uh, that high expression level of PTP4A3 phosphatase uh, expression correlates with metastatic risk in your real melanoma patients. First of all, let's try to find if we can uh, find this uh, gene in the if, if we can find it in the top uh, list of genes, this PTP4A3 gene. So I'm going to clear right now uh, this subset one and look at the clinical data. So in the clinical endpoints, we have folder which indicates uh, number of patients with metastasis and without metastasis. And I'm going to upload on subset one, one group of patients and on subset two, another group of patients. Then I'm clicking, clicking advanced workflow and I will start with marker selection. So we'll try to find this marker in the, in the transmark. I'm going drag and drop whole high dimensional data node, click high dimensional data. So here we don't need to uh, fill this field uh, for marker selection and I click apply selection and hit run. So this analysis will take uh, a few moments and while it's running I'd like to show you another uh, analysis and we'll go back to the, um, to the marker selection result. So here I'm going to show you correlation analysis. So to do that, I need to upload whole UVL melanoma uh, study on subset one, click advanced workflow, and then find correlation analysis. So for this study, I don't have much many options to explore uh, something interesting for this analysis. So I do have two numerical concepts that are required for this analysis. For example, tumor diameter and tumor thickness. So if we would like to know if there is a correlation between these two numeric data, uh, I can select correlation type if I want and hit run. So the result of analysis will appear in the, this uh, histograms and uh, in this plot. So we can see that correlation is quite uh, poor. So anyway, let's go back to the marker selection and we see it's uh, still running and uh, hopefully, so what do we expect? We expect to see, to find ptp 4 a3 gene in the top uh, list of genes. Um, if we will find it, that would be uh, one of the proofs that uh, Transmart works, uh, uh, re that the results that we got in Transmart is in agreement with the publication results. So the result will appear in a few moments. So now we can see that heat map is produced 
and we can see two cohorts, subset 1 and subset 2, are shown here. On the right-hand side, we, we can see probes and associated genes with these probes. Uh, and this, in the bottom, we can see a subject's ID. So that heat map consists of colored, colored squares, and uh, the red color of the square indicates that uh, this gene, this uh, intensity, this gene has higher intensity, and uh, the green color indicates that uh, that particular probe had lower intensity. So if you go down uh, to the table of top markers, as you can see, we have PT, P4, A3 uh, gene here, and we have two probes for this gene that are uh, shown here. So it's a very good result that our uh, gene of interest is in the top five list of markers. So um, for those who is not very familiar how Transmart calculates um, uh, calculates the score. So this is just a for, uh, just a formula to show you. So um, this score is calculated as a log two of the value for particular data point minus log two of the median value of intensity for a whole probe divided by standard deviation. So in Transmart, this score value is kept from minus. 2.5 uh, to plus 2.5. So, are there any questions? Um, if there are no questions, uh, I don't. Um, I don't see any questions at this point. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's continue. So now we found our gene in the top um, list of marker, and now we can create uh, a gene signature. So uh, to create a gene signature, we basically need first to uh, create a text document and copy paste or type the gene, the top genes from uh, marker selection analysis. So there are several formats how to create gene signature, and this is probably most simple one. Just type a symbol, gene symbol uh, list here. So I'm going to close it now. And uh, we go to this tab, which is called gene signature lists. And if we want to create a new gene signature, uh, we need to give it name, for example, new signature. So if you have more information about your gene signature, you populate uh, all the boxes that you want, then you click Next. So again, if you have uh, more information, the more information you have uh, about your gene signature, it's good to uh, complete these all fields. Uh, but I'm going to uh, complete today only required fields. For example, species, technology platform. So in this case, I do know what is technology platform uh, we, we were using, GPL 570. But sometimes uh, when you work with some uh, high dimensional data, uh, the researchers use uh, custom platform. And in, in this case, we have very useful options, which is called other, other, other. Um, hit next. Here we need to identify p-value cutoff, and I can leave it un undefined. File information, so we have a gene symbol list, and full change metric not used. Gene, gene list. So then I click Browse, and I need to uh, upload this new gene signature list. Uh, I already done that. So if we go back to the gene signature list, you can find that I already uploaded gene signature list one, 
and if you would like to see what's in there. So this is the uh, gene list that we uh, just seen in a text document. Uh, Yulia, I do have one question now. Um, someone is asking, we are calculating the z-score to ensure that the data follows standard normal distribution, right? Um, so we, we use median value instead of mean value, if you noticed in the formula. And uh, yes, we use this uh, normal distribution to cap uh, minus 2.5 and plus 2.5 uh, z-score. <clears throat> okay, thanks. So if there is a, if I did not answer your question, so you can formulate your question and send it to Transmart Foundation. We can uh, then uh, answer your question if uh, if you need some details more, if you would like to know more details about that. Okay, thanks. Okay, so um, we go back to analyze, and now we're going to run a heat map using our gene signature. So I'm still going to uh, separate uh, subset into two cohorts without metastasis and with metastasis patients, advanced workflow, and then heat map. So again, whole high dimensional data, I'm going to load it into the um, box. So now I'm going to select gene signature. And I'm going to use uh, aggregate probes um, checkbox. Uh, so in this case, uh, algorithm will be applied and uh, only uh, representative probes will be used in the calculation of uh, this score and producing heat maps. Apply selections, and then I hit run. So this analysis may take a few moments. So, and then I'm going to show you another analysis, which is called box plot with ANOVA. For this, I need to upload whole study into advanced workflow um, in, in the subset one hit advanced workflow and box plot with ANOVA. So here we need to define independent and dependent variable. So uh, for this um, case, I'm going to use yes or no metastasis. Data and as an Actually, I can do it the other way around. And I use high dimensional data. And I'm going to select our gene of interest, PT, P4, A3. Apply selections and hit run. So ANOVA or analysis of variance analyzes the difference among group means. So we will see whether or not means of the several groups are equal. So here is the result of, uh, uh, of the test. So we have group without metastasis and group with metastasis. And uh, we have box plots for each probe of this gene that we have. And we have a statistical summary here, and we can evaluate our result uh, if uh, mean 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 values for each group are different or not. So now let's go back to to the heat map, and we can see that heat map is produced for cohort without metastasis and cohort with metastasis. So we can see that on the right hand side subset with metastasis we have uh, I would say uh, elevated level of expression of this gene signature uh, 
these genes from the gene signature list. So that would be interesting to apply the same mechanism to the another study. We have UMIL melanoma bike and gamy, and um, let's do that. So if the same um, analysis, the same gene signature would work with independent study that were done in another group of uh, researchers. So in this case, I'm going to repeat the same uh, the same analysis. using the same gene signature list and aggregate probe as well as well and hit run so the result is produced this study has small a smaller amount of patients but I would say that we can still see that on the right hand side we can see uh, elevated expression levels of this gene, genes from gene signature. So the next analysis I'm going to run is another um, heat map. We're going to run um, hierarchical clustering. So I'm going to Again, separate study into two subsets, or I can load whole study into subset one and click on hierarchical clustering, upload whole node into the box, um, high dimensional data. I'm going to use gene signature list. I can define number of rows. I can apply clustering by rows, for rows and for columns. So I'm going to use a clustering for columns and hit run. So hierarchical clustering is the method that builds a hierarchy of clusters. So we will see that data will be organized so the object in the same cluster, uh, they are similar to each other than, than objects in the, in the different clusters. So you can see now this uh, tree on the top of the heat map. So another analysis we are going to run is called k-means clustering. So I'm going to leave the same subset 1 and subset 2 uh, separation into the two cohorts click advanced workflow and select k-means clustering I'm going to uh, upload high dimensional data and again use gene signature list So the program asks me how many clusters I want to see. Let's say I want to see three clusters. You can define maximum rows if you have big uh, data set. So then I hit run. So k-means clustering uses algorithm that partition a number of observations into number of clusters in which each observation be belongs to the cluster with the nearest mean. So each observation belongs to the cluster with the nearest mean. So next analysis I'm going to show you. Um, are there any questions with heat maps? I don't see any Oh, wait, yeah, one person. Wait just a second. Uh, yeah. Partha, would you like to ask your question directly? Uh, I've unmuted you. You're yes, yeah, I can, I can hear you now. Go ahead. 
yeah cluster will be based on the types of the data but how i can predefine the uh, predefine the cluster the number of clusters so just know uh, it put how many cluster cluster three so but if the data variation is not three types then how the cluster will be becomes three uh, so you you can upload whole study and I, I separated initially this study into two subsets uh, but you can do it with the whole study and uh, you, you you can define how many clusters you uh, you want to see so uh, actually if you want if you expect to see uh, some some separation into clusters so you can do that or you can define uh, more clusters um, the and the, the, the key the answer you just see what's what's the subject groups you uh, got after after the cl clustering analysis so if let's they're the, in line with your as assumption let's say the problem is that let's say there are data which is uploaded uh, having the five or six types of data now I'm I define I want the two plus I want to see the plus two cluster or three cluster then it might be happen that uh, only the uh, cluster which is having the below uh, or less data that is appearing here the which is having the more data is not appearing here um, I, 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 I'm sorry I, I don't understand exactly your question but you can define how many means you want to select so that would program will do clustering uh, into that particular uh, a num number of clusters uh, that you define um, so again we are we, you are very welcome to formulate your questions to Transmart Foundation and may, maybe they will go back to me or uh, to some other person and we are always glad to answer your questions uh, okay that, uh, personally okay. yep thank, thank, thank you, you. Um, so next analysis I'm going to run is called logistic regression. So uh, in this case I'm going to uh, upload whole study into subset one and then use again tab advanced workflow and select logistic regression. So um, a logistic regression is a method that enables binary variables to be modeled. So in this case we're going to model um, the following. So I'm going to uh, populate this outcome box with patients with metastasis and without metastasis. And uh, is you, if you will read this um, information here for this box, the top concept uh, or the first bin will always be designated as a value of one and the other value will be zero. So value of one will be yes, metastasis, and no, uh, no metastasis, value of zero. So as independent value, I'm going to upload whole dimension, high dimensional data and select gene of interest. ET P4 A3. And then I'm going to hit run. Um, the principle of the logistic regression model is to li link the uh, occurrence or non-occurrence uh, of the event to explanatory variables. So the first plot uh, that you see is called log, log plot um, and uh, it shows a probability of having metastasis versus PT, P4, A3 gene expression level. So probability and versus expression. So these dots represent the data points that you have and this is the model and the gray area is a confidence interval. So another plot is, uh, is a rock curve. So a rock curve uh, displays the performance of the model and enables comparison uh, to be made with other models. So on the uh, 
y-axis and x-axis, you can see a uh, probability of having metastasis versus, uh, uh, you, you can see sensitivity and uh, specificity. Sensitivity is a proportion of well-defined classified positive events and uh, specificity is a proportion of well-classified negative events. So rock curve is used to evaluate uh, the performance of the model by, by means of area under the curve. So this is the result of, uh, uh, of the area under the curve. So I would say this is a pretty good model that can be used uh, uh, in the UVL melanoma. So another analysis I'm going to show you is called scatter plot with linear regression. I'm going to back, go, going back to comparison tab, make sure that whole study uh, is loaded into subset one. Then I click advanced workflows and select scatter plot with linear regression. So then I need to select independent variable and dependent variable. So um, as an independent variable, I'm going to select metastasis, uh, metastasis free survival. And as a dependent variable, I'm going to explore uh, the expression of a gene of interest. PT, P, 4, A, 3. So then I click run. So now we can see if there is a relationship, if, if there is a linear re relationship between two selected uh, uh, variable and you can also see that uh, results of this linear regression. You can see R squared is quite low. So this is a poor linear correlation between these two uh, uh, variables. So the next analysis is uh, I'm going to show is survival analysis. So I'm making sure that whole study is loaded into subset one. I hit advanced workflows and survival analysis. So we can see that there are three boxes, uh, time, category, and sensory variable. So in this study, I don't see uh, like pure survival uh, data, but I have metastasis free survival in months. So I'm going to use uh, this data and if we would have any censoring value variable in this uh, study, we can also populate this box. This box is optional. So if I just uh, click run without category selection, so the result uh, will be shown in the survival curve or Kaplan-Meier curve. And uh, without uh, category selection of categories, we, we can just see a plot with, this is the plot with the error bars. Now we are going to select categories. So I'm going to check genetic characteristics and chromosome three status. So I'm going to use disomy and monosomy cohorts to see what's the uh, survival status for these two categories and hit run. So, and as you can see on the plot that for monosomy is uh, metastasis free survival prognosis is poor than uh, for cohort that had uh, uh, disomy. It also uh, allows, this analysis allows to calculate Cox coefficient and hazards ratio. So um, 
The next analysis I'm going to run is called principal component analysis. I'm going back to the subset one. And a uh, whole study is loaded into subset one. Uh, I'm selecting principal component analysis. So it refreshes this browser. And uh, I'm going to drag and drop whole high dimensional data into variable selection box. And hit run. So um, uh, this analysis will take a few moments. And while it's running, I'm going to show uh, another analysis. So this another analysis is called waterfall. I'm going to select whole study into subset one and click on advanced workflow and select waterfall. So um, in this box, I need to select continuous variable from the data set explorer. So I'm going to select a tumor diameter and I need to define low and high range. So I'm going to define as low would be everything that below or equal 12 and high everything that would be higher, greater or equal 17. So I'm going to hit run. And this waterfall anal analysis allows to visualize numeric data distribution. So we, you can see it in the way of histogram. The uh, data that we consider as low is colored in red. The data that we consider as high, defined as high, colored in the blue. And the data in between is is a base data as black. So uh, let's go back and to see if it's if we can see that PC analysis is still running. So a uh, principal component analysis is a mathematical algorithm that reduces the dimensionality of the data by keeping most of the variations variation in the data set. So it achieves this reduction by identifying directions called principal components along, with, along which the variation in the data is maximal. So you will see that the data will be broken into orthogonal components uh, that will be showing how much of the overall variance are uh, contributing to the variance uh, in the whole data set or percent variance. So the result will appear. And you can see that we have a number of primary components. And we have several plots of observations. In the axis, we can see uh, principal uh, components. And the script plot shows how variants contribute uh, by orthogonal components. So we can see that first three uh, orthogonal components contribute the maximal uh, in the variance. Um, if we scroll down, we can see that uh, we have a table with the genes that are grouped in the table by orthogonal components. So another test I'm going to show is called Fisher test. So I'm making sure that whole study is loaded in subset one. And I'm going to select table with the Fisher test. So, and now I'm going to populate these two boxes. So uh, I'm going to 
fine if there is statistical significance uh, of two uh, associated variables. So I'm going to select uh, presence or um, absence of metastasis with diisomy, monosomy, and partial monosomy. And then I hit run. And the table is produced. And we have results of this uh, analysis. Uh, P-value, uh, chi-squared P-value, and chi-squared result. So, um, uh, are there any questions? Uh, and do we have uh, more time to show a couple other um, analysis? Yeah, you could do one or two more. Uh, I don't again. I don't see any questions. Okay. So um, uh, next analysis I'm going to show you is a, a line graph. It's very simple and nice analysis. But for this analysis, I need to use another study, not related to our topic, because this study has separation of data into time points. So. It can be low-dimensional data or high-dimensional data. And for this study, inflammatory bowel disease uh, uh, are reached. Uh, uh, I'm going to upload whole study into subset one, uh, select advanced workflows, and um, use line graph. So I need to populate time measurement concepts and group concepts. So, uh, as a group concepts, I'm going to select uh, the patients that were treated with, uh, with this particular drug. And as a time measurement concepts, I'm going to upload high dimensional data. So, uh, if it's high dimensional data, I need to select what kind of gene or kind of parameter I'm studying. So I'm going to randomly select a gene that is present in this uh, platform, NAT8. And then I can hit run. So in this case, we have only two time points, baseline and week six. Uh, but usually, uh, if analysis, if study was done in the, with the multiple time points, the TransMart will show you very nice long uh, line graph here. So now we can see the uh, line graph showing intensity for net eight gene for selected cohort, and this is a baseline, and this another uh, point is um, week six. So um, another uh, and last demonstration I'd like to show you today is the genome browser. So I'm going to uh, main tab, comparison tab, and I'm going to clear data, and I'm going to select specific data to be able to use genome browser. So I'm going to uh, get to this uh, test study, and we can see that uh, we have two cohorts, diseased and healthy. And I'm going to click genome browser. And I need to drag and drop whole VCF file into the genome browser. And uh, we have several options how to navigate through this gene browser. You can identify the region that you are particularly interested in, or you can type uh, name of gene. And 
and information will appear for the particular region. So now you can see several uh, labels here and you can uh, click on each one and you will see what kind of or several types of several pieces of information, what kind of mutation it has, what's the reference, what's the was uh, alternative. And um, we can see subset one have this number of mutations and subset two, which is uh, healthy, have this uh, information here. So we can compare these two subsets. And if you would like to, we can turn on uh, SNPs button and we can see that information about SNPs are also loaded now. Clicking on each SNP, you can see uh, additional information about that. So hopefully this demonstration was helpful. Thank you very much for your attention. So if you have uh, any questions, you can ask them uh, now or <coughs> as an option you can write an email and uh, we will answer those questions as well. We had a couple of questions. You know, we had a couple of questions from Mohit Kumar. Um, Mohit, can I unmute you and you can ask? He was asking some questions about the clustering. Oh no, I say some. Um... Mohit, would you like to ask your question? I unmuted you. Yulia, can you see the um, question window? Um, not really. You have to open the open it. It's on okay. the dashboard. Mohit. He's asking for clustering. What I know for choosing the k value, we plot the gradient descent versus the k value, and we choose the minimum descent value of k. If not, we can try to take that offline, uh, Yulia, and we can try to answer that yeah. one later. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All all questions can be asked uh, offline, and uh, um, we'll yeah. try to answer every question. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll send it over <laughs> to you. Look we'll at it. Okay. Well, uh, thanks everyone. Hopefully, this class uh, was was helpful for you. Uh, as I said, we will. It has been recorded, and we will have it posted uh, later today. And uh, please. Uh, if you'd like to have any, if you have any comments, please send them to me. That you will get a questionnaire, a short questionnaire tomorrow. Uh, that uh, we would appreciate if you would fill out for us. Thanks again, and uh, consider uh, future classes when you're, um, as you, especially as you talk to your colleagues. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye.